we'll start. There you go. A little late, but we'll start. Okay, so just to repeat a little bit, um, at the Trex conference, one of the things that they said was, um, you have to prove uh, that in your online classrooms that you're actually doing face-to-face -face, um, meetings. And the way that we prove that is by recording our meetings. And I know most of you who are teaching classes know this um, and do record your classes and save that into the classroom. But I wanted to let you know that in the faculty handbook, um, in this part three, I have an explanation of how to do that. So up, up above, I show how to, you know, how to even do a Zoom meeting. And Maria, this will be your first, first time, so you're going to be able to, you're going to want to probably look at this. Um, but this section down here in the um, manual <laughs> handbook talks about um, recording. So as you can see, there's your little record button. And um, this talks about the chats. But, um, and how to screen share, but then when you're finished recording, um, your recording will be on your C drive. And so what you need to do is it creates an MP3 file for you. So that will be on your um, computer. And what you need to do is upload that into either YouTube or Vimeo. And so if you don't have a YouTube channel or a Vimeo for yourself, uh, you can upload it into BGU's uh, YouTube channel. So here's the link to the BGU uh, videos, and that's the little button right there that you push to upload your your uh, your recording. And then this box appears where you want to save and upload it. And then oh, I didn't finish. Well, maybe I maybe I put it up here somewhere, or maybe it's in the popular one where you take that link and put it into the Populi classroom. And mm -hmm. so that way we have proof when Trax comes that we've actually had these face-to-face um, these, uh, -face -face meetings. It's really, really important mm -hmm. to um, Trax. Mm -hmm. So that's that one. And then let me share if I can find the other one. Let's see if that's it. Yeah, okay, this is part two. So this is the um, part two of the handbook that talks about um, Populi, how to set up your classroom, how to make changes, how to make edits. But this is also where um, you're gonna put your link to your recording. Mm -hmm. So that explains about that. And of course, Nathalia and, well, Dion is only available on Saturdays, but Nathalia and Dion are available for you to help you um, to be able to, to know how to do that. The other thing I wanted to talk about today is um, one of the things that has happened with Populi, they charge us by um, the number of students who are actively in class each month. And so what's happened is we've noticed that they're charging us for um, students who have an incomplete or who have an extension or a waiting grade. And if you'll recall, we used to do the AG in the status for a waiting grade or um, EXT if they had an extension and not, we wouldn't finalize the class. Well, we find that Populi is charging us for that. So instead, I watched one of the videos that um, Populi provides. I don't know if any of you have seen that. I will try to share my screen in a minute and show you how to look at some of those videos, instructional videos from Populi. But what I learned is that we should be changing their status to an incomplete instead of the extension or awaiting grade. So the way that you do that is if you're in the roster page for your class, there's a little tiny pencil over here under the column called manage. And if you click on that, this box comes up and um, this where it says incomplete, you wanna change that from no to yes and then save it. And then you need to lock or finalize your class. And that way, BGU won't be charged. And you do need to make a note. Um, if you look at the, um, in that same place on the roster, oops, sorry about that. Um, see this, it's hard to see, I know, but there's this little tiny box that says notes. Mm -hmm. And if you click on that button, then you can, you can add your information about if they've got an extension. And I normally make notes in that myself. 
and the student can see it and you can see it as the professor. And so mm -hmm. you'll know even if they have it incomplete that they have a, an approved extension or whatever. So notes like that in that section are very helpful. Mm -hmm. So um, did you want me to uh, show, what was I going to say in my in popular? I was going to show something. <laughs> don't know if anybody wants to see that, but um, are there any questions about that? Anything further that you'd like to see perhaps? Hearing none. And Judy, is the faculty manual done and on the website right now? The yeah. Faculty can access that. Um, I'm going to actually upload the newer. I did add some little things to it, so it okay. will be in the Populi online library. It won't Good. be on the yeah. website. It's in the library. All right. Yeah. But I'll upload that um, when I, with these new changes. I did. Let's add. try and encourage you to have it on your hard drive, so even if you're not connected, you can consult it. Yeah. Save it. Oh. If you, if you mm -hmm. want. So it'll be a PDF. So. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, Judy. This is excellent. Uh, Brian, welcome. Judy, you've already you made the announcement <laughs> that you are looking for articles. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> Jennifer, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I was just going to remind Judy before she um, moves off of her topic, can she show us where the popular videos, training videos can be found? Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, that was what I was going to do, <laughs> share that. Let me just stop sharing that and share this app. Okay, so in Populi, when you are in Populi, up here in the upper right-hand corner is a little button called Help. And if you click on that, and then it brings this drop-down screen. Can you all see that? Yeah. And one of them is Search the Knowledge Base. And so if you click on that, it brings up all of the um, knowledge bases. And so for you, this button called faculty is gonna be the one that will be the most helpful. And if you click on that, it has all these topics. And this is where, and you know, when, I, when we first got popular, it's like three years ago, I, I watched some of these, but not all of them. And so now I'm going back and going, oh, I never, I never did that. And so like student course summary, what is that? I've never heard of that before. Well, um, peer review assignments, I mean, different things that you can watch. And some of them are videos, like this one using the gradebook. Some of them just have screenshots and explanations. And some of them actually have videos. So this is a really good resource for students and faculty. The students can click on the same thing if they're having trouble. Um, they can easily just click on the one that says students uh, right here. So they can go in and how can I find information on my profile, different things like that. So anyway, um, thank you, Jennifer, for reminding me to, to share that. Any questions Judy, about Yes. While you're on that, where is the Populi Library again where the faculty handbook is located? Oh, okay. Let's Just so faculty know that. Sure. Okay, so if we go back. Oops, that's one. So in, uh, you're back in there and popularly way up here on this black toolbar there's one that's called library and if you click on that it brings you to the um, search resources browse subjects all that the one that you want to um, and th this is also where you can find uh, dissertations articles and things like that but if you just type in <coughs> handbook it brings up here's your faculty handbook the final project handbook um, a volunteer something or a handbook. It also has the student handbook. Um, so this is a very easy way of, of getting um, to these various topics. And again, this is the 1617, and what I'm going to upload is the 1718 three part mm -hmm. series <laughs> because it's so large with those screenshots. Mm -hmm. So that's where you find it. Okay. And if it, if it has a, um, um, a little green button let's go back there if it has this little green button it means it's available online and that's true of books too and Jennifer I know explained some of this but um, dissertations if you were looking for a particular dissertation let's say you click on that and we want um, let's just put theology of work because there are so many dissertations that have that 
So you see any of them that have the green button, you would be able to download and access. Looks like all of these are accessible and some of them I've even put the pictures on if I, mm -hmm. I was working on it. Um, so here's Adele's and then there's her PDF version and it brings up, takes a while to unload it because it's so big, but there you go. That's great. Let me just mention one thing too that I didn't realize that Jennifer has been loading a lot of PDF files of some of our textbooks. Yeah. A lot of times if a textbook is into its you know, third or fourth revision, sometimes you can get a whole PDF file of say, you know, the mm -hmm. second, second version. Mm -hmm. And that's been very helpful to some of our students who just can't afford, you know, to buy some of the expensive textbooks. Mm -hmm. So I just really appreciate that, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Jennifer will tell us more about uh, what she's been uploading recently as well. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, let's move on. If there's no more questions or comments. Um, I just want to have a discussion and possibly uh, your input regarding uh, becoming more professional in our classrooms. I think we, you have received a memo that uh, we wrote about a month ago. And um, we have had also a student who has, uh, who has told us from a student perspective a little bit what uh, she would uh, deem more professional. So I've, we've listed a number of items that we want just to review with you, get your input. Um, the first one is on uh, syllabi. Um, and I reviewed the syllabus yesterday, yesterday night, and in our template, and this is something that we need to work on, Judy and I, in our template, we say sometimes the students, sometimes you, and in the same paragraph, um, we need to uh, really um, make our language coherent and cons consistent, thank you, and address the syllabus to the student um, because it's a contract between the student and you. So um, I'm going to review all the syllabi. This is my big task this month um, for next semester and then just uh, change those. Um, and you may want to do it yourself and let me know that you have done it. Uh, if you teach in the uh, winter semester, that would be very helpful. But let's keep in mind that um, in our syllabi, we are really uh, not taking this third person stance, but we want to get the student involved uh, as this is a contract between you, the professor, and the student. Um, Martine, I would just uh, add that yes. from, a, from a readability research standpoint, mm -hmm. that really makes sense. That makes it much more readable to make it uh, with the personal second person. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this encouragement. Um, there's a book uh, called Teaching Theology and uh, it has a lot of insights on how to teach more in a more practical and coherent way. Um, and I've actually uh, followed the, uh, the training that was offered with the, with the book by the, by the writer and um, it was just a good pedagogical <laughs> uh, renewal for me, at least. Uh, your photograph. Could you please make sure that your photograph, uh, whatever is uploaded on Popularly, looks professional? Um, and have one that, that is there, and don't, don't leave, leave the initials. I think most of you here have a photograph there. Um, we have also some... Uh, we have had comments on the visual quality of handouts. Um, try to scan and or have uh, PDFs that are uh, professional, that look professional, that are um, readable, that are upside, not upside down, etc. Uh, and especially when you have uh, you are teaching the same course year and year over. And make sure that um, your course information or your course uh, handouts are updated and look a little bit look very professional. Now, media file uh, is limiting um, our repository to two years, I believe, uh, Judy. So we are asking you to 
upload all your documents now, your course documents, on the info page, um, uh, on your course page in Populi, and it's going to be copied automatically when you clone the class for the next semester. So if you have any questions on how to do that, uh, let us know between uh, Judy, Natalia, and myself. Um, We've been doing that for a while now. Um, and it makes it easier for students not to go to a third website to download documents, but they just have everything on the website. I'm going to go through all this list and then we can discuss what needs to be. Uh, I mean, I'll give you time for feedback. Another request has come from students, uh, and especially I would say for students who have um, who are ESL students and who do not necessarily um, have the um, mastery of the English language, uh, like me, for instance. Um, it helps to have an outline of your uh, lectures, of your videos that you put on uh, online. Um, I've done that with a course that I've taught last, last year, a year and a half ago, and students have really appreciated having the outline. Uh, number one, if students are located in um, countries where the bandwidth is limited, they can read the outline and still have the content that they need. Uh, and second, um, if you have to rewind and restart um, a video to just get one piece of information, an outline will, will be helpful. And it will just um, be helpful to provide students um, like a, um, a guide as to what is going to be covered. Um, Silva, I need to be ready at least two months prior to a class start. And please, please, please do not change readings, um, the reading list the, at the last minute. Uh, welcome, Claire. Um, Thank you. Discussions, especially discussions, but also for the other assignments. Please make sure that you grade in a timely manner, which means uh, the discussions from this week need to be graded next week. The assignments submitted this week need to be graded next week, except for the major uh, final uh, assignments. Um, giving an ongoing feedback to students will be helpful for them to improve, whereas if we just grade everything at the end, this is not going to be too helpful. And um, use, you have been sent some uh, rubrics to help, from, uh, to help grading. If you want to change them, this is okay. If you want to adapt them to your assignment, please do. But uh, try to find um, a grading system and use grading rubrics so that the grading is not uh, too subjective, but so that students understand why they have the grade that they have. Um, as we talk about grading, I would like to talk also about feedback in your discussion uh, forums. Um, and this might, uh, Judy, you may add a section, want to add a section. Um, in your discussion forums, um, try to move, do the same thing that we expect students to do, uh, move the discussion further. You can ask a question, provide additional resource. Um, just don't limit yourself to affirming students, okay? But try to have them to uh, develop their critical thinking skills, to read another document that might be giving another perspective, um, ask questions rega regarding the relevancy, the limitations of the, context, of the context that they are coming from, and how um, this could be adapted in different contexts, etc. And uh, I'm going to stop here. I would like uh, any comments on this on this part before we um, do the group group project discussion. Any questions, comments? Um, yes. I have a question about the outline mm -hmm. of the video yeah. about giving students that mm -hmm. because um, the way I use a video it's part of the teaching process so that I would like them to, I would like the, the way I ask the questions 
for discussion is aimed at making sure that they have looked at the video. So I'm concerned that my outline may mm -hmm. be helping them to do the work that I want them to do. Now I can see us doing that um, in a particularly careful manner for the non-English speaking mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. But in a class where English is their first language, I am not quite sure how well I could do that without putting them at a place where they don't really pay attention to the video as I expect them to. Thank you so much, Claire. Um, do we have any feedback from others regarding this question or this comment? I was just thinking if, if Claire is talking, say, a, a video that they're to watch the content, that, that's one issue. But say if you're going to give a lecture on a Zoom room, I'm thinking that would be the place to put an outline. I mean, I always send out an outline to students before the Zoom room, just so they, if it's on my lecture notes, that's basically what I do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bill. May Actually, I ask? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I usually use PowerPoint a lot. Um, and the PowerPoint is designed to be like, course notes. Yeah. So if I use PowerPoint, do I still have to do an outline? I don't think so. Okay. Because the PowerPoint is an outline actually. Yes. Okay. Um, another purpose of doing having two modalities, learning modalities, the visual and the uh, and the reading is uh, what is that some students um, are not um, learning best uh, watching or listening to a video. But like myself, I'm learning best when I read. Um, and this is due to my age and to my whatever. <laughs> um, some other students learn best when they watch a person talking, like my husband. Uh, some other students cannot download the video because it's requiring too much bandwidth. So if we provide the content in different model learning modalities, then we reach out to our students uh, in more efficient ways. I also think it's helpful, I say I use PowerPoints also, but I, you can of course create a PDF file from your PowerPoint yeah. and yeah. I will send that out to students so they can use that as their note taking, you know, mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's an excellent suggestion. Thank you, Bill. But definitely if you're using a PowerPoint while you make a presentation, then that, uh, that's going to be helpful to students because they can at least read something. Let me ask a question on discussions. Yes. At least in the two courses I teach, I basically have a weekly assignment that is usually mm -hmm. based on the discussion that each student needs to do individually. And that's been the way I have interacted with students, you know, individually mm -hmm. each week. So I guess what I'm trying to decide right now, if it would be better for me to be more involved in the actual, say in the discussion and not require a weekly assignment where I interact with a student, it would be better mm -hmm. just to interact with the whole class and spend more of my time you know at that level as opposed to uh, working on and grading a weekly assignment yes and you may want to look in, into that um that might be a more powerful way of using discussion forums um, sometimes students have a tendency to think that discussion forums are just uh, text messages uh, to each other um, we need to move our the level of our discussions at an academic to an academic level where students make references to prior readings of prior class materials and i've in some courses that i've monitored this semester uh, this term uh, i've not seen that um, let's uh, we need to use uh, bloom's taxonomy as as a basis of the kind of questions we ask and the kind of uh, responses we uh, we expect and uh, the higher levels of bloom's taxonomy will uh, engage the students much more it's, um, there's a lot, of, well, a lot of the uh, courses where I went into had uh, more on the feeling, what you're thinking, but it's at the lower level and we want to lead students to critically assess what they feel, think, have experienced and uh, integrate into these uh, the, um, processes what they've learned in the course, their readings from the course, their, ex uh, their exchanges from previous weeks, etc. 
Yeah, Martina. Yeah. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, Martina, I had a, a question back on, on the video. Uh, for example, one of the videos that I use has to do uh, with, uh, uh, well, it's called uh, Between Heaven and Earth. Maybe mm -hmm. some of you have seen that. And it's, I think it's about 20 minutes long. Are, are we looking at just a summary of the video or a point-by-point -point, uh, outline covering everything that's in <laughs> Yeah, for instance, uh, that's a good, very good question, Larry. Thank you. Um, somebody who lives in Africa most probably will not be able to download your video unless they are in a city and have good internet access. Um, so I leave it up to your judgment, but you, uh, you need to take into consideration that we do have students who, uh, global students who are not, uh, have not access to a large bandwidth. Um, this morning I was teaching in Burkina Faso in the main city and I was not able to teach. I sent my outline and I asked the professor on site to, uh, to manage student questions and review it. That's all I could do because the video was not working. I mean, the bandwidth was, was very slow, very limited. So um, we need to be, as we are a global school, we need to be mindful of where our students are and um, give them as much um, learning material as we can. So if you can give a thorough outline, <laughs> go ahead. Um, and you can do that like step by step. You could even ask um, students, sometimes I've done that not, not with PGU, but I've done that for other assignments in other classes I taught. I, ask, I have asked students to uh, give me, an, when I had a group that could download the video, just outline the video uh, as an assignment and then critically evaluate it. Let me ask one more question. This is Bill. Go ahead. Um, there's been times, if I have a class that say is over 10 students, mm -hmm. I've broken that class up into two or three discussion groups. Yeah. Because it seems like, for, at least from my perspective, it's, it's given the students, you know, they, there's, more, there's more involvement with a few students Whereas mm -hmm. if they're trying to relate to say, you know, 15 students in a discussion mm -hmm. forum online, I find that it gets a bit unwieldy. So I'm, yeah. I'd like to get, I guess I'd like some feedback on that. If maybe if, yeah. if you have a larger class, we can, we can make, you know, two discussion, two or three discussion groups mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a professor can actually, you know, insert questions into each of those groups as he yeah. or she would see fit. Yeah. Thank you, Bill, for sharing another strategy. Um, any feedback on this strategy? Yeah, Bill, I, I use discussion groups uh, in, in every class. Uh, last time I had 14, and I think I had four or five discussion groups. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a group of three makes a good discussion group, I find, right. but uh, I, I do use those all the time. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice, both Larry and Bill, for the rest of us who are not using them necessarily? <laughs> yeah, they are a little more difficult to set up. Probably okay. either Dion or, or Nat Nathalia would need to help you set those up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always, of course, I start with a discussion, you know, a discussion topic. I just put yeah. that out to each, the same topic to each group. And then mm -hmm. they start working with those, those topics. And now if I'm going to become a little more involved, you know, I will, again, start looking at the discussion and try to insert uh, other questions along the way that would probably facilitate that discussion onward. Sometimes I have, a, I'll do an assignment and have the group, uh, they can get together by email or Skype or however they want to do it, but mm -hmm. then come up with a collective response to the assignment and then they post mm -hmm. that so that all the other students can read it. Yeah. Uh, so, so that that makes them talk together and then come mm -hmm. up with a, a unified or or even express any disagreements that came up in yeah. the group, but yeah. at least mm -hmm. come up with a, a report on what they mm -hmm. came up with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you both Bill and Larry for sharing your experience on group projects. This is our next subject. Uh, before we move to the next subject, are there any other comments on uh, what we've been discussing? Um, I would just like to add mm -hmm. that in addition to what um, Larry said, that another way I've used a discussion group is 
to get students to focus in on particular themes and con concepts, major concepts of the course. So what I do is I don't necessarily have each group discussing the same issue. I have yeah. them discussing different issues mm -hmm. and then they give a feedback, one feedback, so that everybody gets to cover, yeah. to see what each concept represents, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a great idea. Thank you idea. so much, Claire. Yeah. I like that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how I usually uh, use groups, is so that there's a complementary reflections. So there's different ways, and uh, we need to just make some decisions uh, on how to move uh, appropriately at this, the pace of the students as well. Um, any other feedback? Otherwise, Fries and uh, Brian and uh, Kurt, Jennifer, Maria? The feedback I have, this is Kurt, um, yes, Kurt, is I hadn't even considered in some of the different teaching scenarios I've been in, mm -hmm. in breaking into discussion groups. That's actually, it seems so common sense, but it's genius <laughs> uh, from, from my perspective mm -hmm. uh, because it does enhance the conversation. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I appreciate what you were bringing up in that my conversations with the students traditionally happen around the weekly assignments as well. And so I'm just being mindful. I'm currently just thinking about all that's been said, but this has been good mm -hmm. food for thought for me on both the use of discussions, if I'm going to do, do them, which I think we need to do them, but breaking mm -hmm. into discussion groups. And I think um, what was brought up about using three, I do think that's probably a magical number for it, mm -hmm. if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then the role of that weekly assignment, either how to make more robust discussions or and stop the weekly assignment or really mm -hmm. hone in on that weekly assignment. So that's one of my takeaways right now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for sharing, Kurt. Okay. Any other thoughts? We just need time to process. This is off topic from that, but where are the, is there a place where the rubrics are all located? I think you heard that before and I just forgot. Is there a place on Populi where all the rubrics are? Um, actually, we had emailed them to all faculty, but um, we could put them, what do you think, Judy and uh, Jennifer, we, can we put them on in the repository, either in the library or on the website? Uh -huh. Any ideas? Judy, I, I'll be guided by Judy. <laughs> I can put them in the online library if you want to. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And just put a set of rubrics. Just as a collection as of, of yeah. rubrics, I can do it in one file and yeah. And just in one folder, and, yeah. And mm -hmm. name it rubrics, yeah. That would be great. That would be idea. wonderful. Yes. And uh, I'll send you, Jennifer, I'll send you all the rubrics I have, but I'm telling, uh, asking faculty, if your final assignment does not match the rubric, make it match the re rubric requirements. I mean, make, make your rubric match the assignment requirements, sorry. Okay, so uh, this will help you hopefully to, um, <coughs> to move towards a more um, equitable grading as well. Okay, good discussions, excellent. Um, Bill, you wanted, you asked for this discussion group projects do you want to elaborate a little bit yeah that that's kind of been one of the areas i've just had some difficulty you know trying mm -hmm. to come up with a group project you know in mm -hmm. the dissertation i don't even try for a, a group project there because each student is working on a proposal you know in the organizational assessment i have you know, we we end that that course with each student uh, presenting uh, an assessment process outline and what I've done, what I would call a group project, they put that outline out to their discussion group. They receive feedback from the group on their outline before they make a presentation. But I guess I'd just like to kind of understand what other faculty are doing in terms of that group project. That we, you know, if we need a group project in every course and what that might look like in various, uh, you know, various contexts. Okay, which is... The rest of the group thinking and experiencing regarding group projects. Bill, what, what I do um, 
is to, since they, they all have to write an individual project, I have the groups then talk about and, and talk with each other about what they're thinking about doing in their individual project. And then creating a, a short, uh, like seven or eight slides in a PowerPoint where they explain their purpose and their audience and, and the need and what they're going to do in their individual project. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I get together with them just with the group. Like if there's three in a group, then I will meet with them in a Zoom room and they will present their, their uh, PowerPoints that they've created. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through and we'll talk through their individual project. Um, but they, they get feedback from each other, which really helps them mm -hmm. find their ideas. And sometimes they get some whole new directions, you know, in, in their individual projects by doing this. And, and it bonds them to be together to be in those yeah. smaller groups. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I like that. I, like I say, I've done that when you do it because the outline for the assessment is really an outline for their, their course project. I like that idea, though, using that in the smaller groups. Like, you know, last mm -hmm. week I had to have, you know, 12 students present <laughs> outlines in one Zoom room, which made it too long, we felt rushed, etc. So I like that idea of breaking it up into smaller Zoom room uh, yeah. segments. That would be great. Yeah, we have, say we have an hour for a Zoom room, there's three students, I'll say, well, each student gets 10 minutes to present their PowerPoints, which leaves a half an hour then for us to have a group discussion uh, right. on all yeah. of the different ones, yeah. And these 10 minutes are very short. <laughs> Right. May I add to what Larry has been saying about yes, um, group work, especially with the research. Um, I have found that the group work with the research students has been one of the most powerful ways to get them to understand what they want to do. Um, the, the fellow students have been, for some students, their best critics. So, for example, um, in working on the chapter one of the mm -hmm. dissertation thesis, I would have them come together in small groups and it could be two or three of them and um, present their initial idea and they get feedback from each other. And mm -hmm. I found that a very powerful way of getting them to focus mm -hmm. on what they want to do mm -hmm. um, because Oftentimes, students start out very broad about what they want to do. And it's only in that process of dialogue with each other and with the, the professor that we get them to narrow down to something that is meaningful and doable. So I found the group work in research a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, Claire. Any other examples of group work? Yeah, this is Brian. I just wanted to affirm I do pretty much the same thing that Larry does because that's kind of what I learned when I was first uh, coming on. But I've expressed before to Judy, I've always felt uh, that the group work is kind of challenging, especially trying to pull students together. If you assign them in a group and they're all over different parts of the world, some of them might be really gung-ho about it and some of them might not even have an internet connection or a major time difference. Uh, so it's always, that's been my biggest challenge, which is like, that's every BGU class and professor. So it's not like, um, that's anything new, but, uh, then it kind of, it becomes challenging when you get to the point of how did your group experience go? And some of them, you know, the three of them together were able to collaborate and it was a wonderful experience. And then the next group, well, we never really were able to connect and, mm -hmm. and I don't even know if that person didn't respond to my email and, and it mm -hmm. wasn't a good experience. So, um, I'm just trying to figure out how to. Uh, I guess, bring some consistency to the experience, but it's good to hear what other people are doing. Yeah. Uh, Brian, uh, Larry again here. I, uh, in week one, as soon as I know what I have in, in terms of students, um, I'll sit down and look at the time zones and I try to build the groups with compatible time zones. If they're an hour or so off, that's, that's fine. But uh, I try not to put anybody in the same group, if possible, that, you know, they're nine hours apart. <laughs> so uh, that makes sense. That's I just make it a, possible, a policy to do in, in week one, as soon as I know the, the, the student group that I have. Yeah, yeah that, that is good. This is Bill again. I'm 
probably what I'm wrestling with, and I, I guess it's coming out of this discussion. You know, we, we've got a distinction in the grading, uh, you know, format there between group work and discussions. Now, at least for me, if I've divided my class into groups, they're, the discussions they're doing all, you know, throughout the whole course is the discussion grade. And it's hard for me then to distinguish, you know, a group project from that because to me that becomes meaningless. But maybe we could just kind of all get together on that and mm -hmm. see what that mean. What does that mean? I mean, a group discussion is a group project. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So it's it's one way of doing it. Definitely. It's just that we have two grade slots. We have one for group work and one for discussion work, and those are for me are very. Uh -huh. um, same yeah. we're talking about the same issue so we need to eliminate one of those or combine yes. them mm -hmm. yeah and we That's but on the other hand we need to uh demonstrate that there is a uh, group interaction within the class so we cannot okay. give up the group grade <laughs> okay is that is that a is that an accreditation issue we, i mean because like i say a discussion and a group I, I guess, you know, if we just need to have those categories, because to me, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same grade because I have a group that's yes. been functioning throughout the whole course. So I'm going to grade them on their discussion and their group work. It's going to be the same, the same grade. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. fine with me if, that, if that's what we want to do. Yeah, and if I can, uh, yeah, I do. Um, this was something that I struggled with myself when I was teaching my class um, because the, at, the, at the time when this was first created, there was um a requirement that we have and it has nothing to do with tracks it had everything to just do with who was in charge at the time um that we had a group project that you had to have a group project and i found that with my class it that was like impossible but to grade that because it wasn't fair because you have and i've heard this from a lot of professors and a lot of students who say this and that is I got a bad grade on my group project because so-and-so never showed up mm -hmm. and they didn't contribute anything or we got that person got an A on their group project and they didn't do anything in our group. Mm -hmm. And so there is an equity issue here that I think is really important for us to discuss and for a decision mm -hmm. to be made personally. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I did was I broke mine down to I called it a group presentation instead of a group project. So each student and my group, my classes were always very small. So it wasn't, you know, five, six were the maximum. And so they did, they made the 10 minute presentation, uh, uh, whatever the assignment was for the group presentation. It was a PowerPoint where they had to do a project um, and it was separate from the individual project. And then I could grade them on that. It was an individual, but it was a presentation to the group. So mm -hmm. I, I struggle with it, the group project idea, mm -hmm. because like I said, it, it seems inequitable to mm -hmm. some students. Yeah. Uh, oh. And it's not a tracks requirement, right? No, it's not. No. no. Okay. Okay. No. Uh, when I, go ahead, Claire. Um, I was introduced to group work and the benefits of it in my, um, in, in undergraduate, um, my undergraduate program. And I have a, a good example to answer the issue of inequity that I experienced as an undergraduate. Um, actually, I was doing my diploma in education and we, throughout that program, we worked in groups. And there, there was a group that I was in, we had a member who didn't do anything, literally. However, our group met, we covered her area, we got an A for the course. She got an F. The professor knew what was happening. Nobody reported to him, but what you do with a group, you monitor your group. So you can know those who are working and those who aren't. I've seen that firsthand. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Claire. Um, another way to address it, and I've, I've done that when I was teaching in another university, I had um, each group member um, share or I had a form or kind of a rubric where each group member uh, was uh, stating their the percentage on the approximate percentage of their participation to the project so they had the ownership of the project and how they got organized and each of them had to also write down what their role was 
I think I can probably find that, that form. But it was another way of trying to make sure that there's more equity in group work. Mm. So there, there, yeah. Yes, Bill. Yeah, I guess, again, this is Bill again. At least still, based on what we're saying, it still seems to me discussion work and group work or group discussion work is pretty much the same grade. And I would yeah. just still just like to maybe yeah. think about possibly so, combining that into a, a category. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we, we need to, to review our syllabi requirements, uh, maybe at another faculty meeting. Yeah. Well, there's a difference, isn't there, between the weekly group discussion and the group project, which is a specific project. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm with Judy, I have problems with the group project. I'm trying to do innovative um, thinking, and I think I've, I've confused Judy with some of my innovative thinking for group projects, mm -hmm. so that it's not all, all dependent on um, necessarily one person making sure it all happens. That has been my experience ever since junior high with group projects. So I see group projects as somewhat juvenile and junior high or high school-ish. When you're dealing with adult learners, you need a different kind of approach. It needs to be inclusive. You want to encourage community interaction and community thought processes mm -hmm. without um, weighing down the potential of the individual learner to develop and move forward. Sometimes a group mentality can hold you back. And that's what I have found in a group project. However, some kind of community process together where you're developing a, a certain thought or theme within the context of some kind of project, I think has application. But I think mm -hmm. if we could just think outside of the box on that and maybe move forward relative to what adult learners need as opposed to learners in high school. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this contribution, uh, Maria. So we have food to think, uh, food for thought, and uh, perhaps we can put this on the agenda for next uh, for our next faculty meeting that we go more in depth in what we think we should require as part of the group uh, of the final uh, grade. And should the good uh, group project uh, is it mandatory? Is it not mandatory? Okay. Okay. Um, we need to move on to having developing a faculty evaluation tool, with a self evaluation tool where each of us, uh, when we complete a course, we ask students to evaluate themselves, but we need also to ask faculty to evaluate ourselves. Um, Judy, do you want me to share my screen? Okay. Sorry, yes. I was trying to find the document. I can't find it. So, yes. Uh, okay. Let me share. Um, well. Okay. I've drafted here a number of uh, questions um, and faculty assessment uh, questions that we, I'm trying to get, I'm using open office, so it's a bit more challenging for me. Let me do this. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's not working. Anyway, um, can you read this or do you want me to make it a little bit larger? Probably. Um, and I thought of having uh, something like um, the survey that the ori uh, orientation students, the students view when they use the orientation packet, where they have to put a quiz. Um, and it could be like a scale of one, two, three, or something like that. And here are some questions. I looked at what was available in some other universities and uh, inspired, got inspired, and rewarded a little bit. Um, uh, Judy, do you want to read those through? Or should we just read those through and find out what you like, what you don't like, or just go one by one? Uh it's up to you. I'm, I'm okay. Let's, well, let's go then one by one, see if the wording is okay, and then if we're missing any area that we think we need to evaluate ourselves. 
The first one would be uh, as a faculty, I'm proficient with the popular uh, LMS, um, and you would have a like a self reading grade. Would that be okay? Hearing none. I actively, number two, I actively communicate with students online at least three times a week and with a variety of communication tools. Okay. One thing on that particular area, mm -hmm. Bill, yeah, uh, depending on which class I'm working on, you know, I may do a Zoom room each, every week. I do that in the organizational mm -hmm. assessment class. Yeah. Yeah. In the research class, we've probably done a Zoom room every other week. Yeah. I don't know if we need any standard in terms of one time we said each class have mm -hmm. at least two Zoom rooms. We might want to evaluate Well, that. This, this is not necessarily with Zoom rooms. Uh, right. When you answer a discussion, you communicate right. with a student. When you post something on the dashboard, you communicate with students. Um, when you email students, you communicate with students. Somebody has their... Uh, okay, this is better. Um, I mean, what do we think is uh, an expression of our presence in the course as, as a professor of record? Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Grace. Um, this is show my ignorance, but uh, does, do all the faculty members know what these things mean, LMS, for for? For PA, all of those um, types of things that are not yeah. spread out. L LMS is learning management system, and we can we should spread it out definitely. And we all know that we are working with properly. Especially, especially the new ones. Yeah. Martin, it seems to me that question two includes two questions. Um, mm -hmm. Three times a week is one thing, and a variety of communication tools is another. Could that be split into two questions? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might, we might have just, might, I don't know if the, the Zoom rooms would fit there or if that needs to be a separate question. Like I said, at one time we had a requirement for how many Zoom rooms we'd want to have in, you know, in each course. Well, I have not even put any Zoom because to me it's part of our communication tools. So um, that's why I've put a variety of communication tools so that it gives us uh, some leverage here. Yeah, I like that. Perhaps yes. I like you can just that. put in parenthetically yeah. after communication after, tools, uh -huh. include Zoom and discussions and email, whatever, okay. just some yeah. ideas. Whatever. Yeah, ideas. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Skype meetings, emails, dashboard communications, mm -hmm. telephone, questions, phone calls, phone calls. Uh, sorry, etc. Would that be helpful? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Um, Another one, I've communicated to students when the standards were graded. Do you have any comment on this one? And this is something important because students, um, we have a contract with students and students can expect that we do our job the same way we do, we expect them to do their job on time. Um, my number five, my syllabus is comprehensive. The bibliography has been updated. It follows BGU syllabi format. Would that be understandable? That was fine. Me. I, um, I'm going to bring up something that's probably <laughs> heretical here, <laughs> but <laughs> we, we always include those, uh, what the eight BGU, um, you know, perspectives, uh, mm -hmm. perspectives uh, in every syllabi and or syllabus, and I, it, it to me it makes it so weighty or so heavy mm -hmm. that I wonder if students tend to get lost in that. And I, I think we need to communicate those, but I'm wondering if it needs to be in every syllabus. 
That, that's my heretical question. <laughs> Judy, do you want to answer this one? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I, um, you know, because I mean, I was not there when the syllabus format uh, has been set up. Um, I rather, in French, we see sin because of doing too much rather than sin of not doing uh, because of not doing enough. But it's a French term. Um, I'd rather um, do too much of something good uh, than not enough. Because if we do not include the eight perspectives, then um, this um, habit of thinking uh, regarding the habits, the eight perspectives and how they need to be addressed in, our, in the dissertation might be a little bit uh, lacking. I have, a, I have a comment. Uh, I have a Sorry. comment. Um, the, I, what I have found using those perspectives is definitely listing them, but that usually students' projects and, and papers focus on one or two of them yeah. and, and make that as an emphasis rather than all of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Grace. So can we leave this in the syllabi, in the syllabus? It's who we are. <laughs> Okay, idea to FERPA policies, and this needs to be also spelled out. Um, we need to make sure that uh, we do that and that we're consciously doing it. And especially, I would say, as American profs, we ten tend to do that on a regular basis. But uh, for those of us who are non American, we need to, this makes us more conscious of the, um, these policies that are not necessarily the same um, in other countries. I can obtain technical support for myself and for students at the appropriate time. And this can. I, commun I communicate and monitor students' compliance with academic integrity policies. Are we checking that students have not plagiarized? That's basically the underlying question. Yeah, again, you might want to put in you might want to put in parentheses there, you know, plagiarism, uh, you know, participant consent and research, you know, just some of those things that uh, come under academic integrity. Okay. Nine, I communicate well in advance to students when I'm not available for class activities. We all have our lives going on while we're teaching and sometimes we, are, uh, we have uh, commitments like conferences to attend, presentations to make, traveling, etc. Um, and I've seen profs communicating like, not, in, not even communicating that they are not going to be available and are um, communicating just the day before that tomorrow I'm leaving, I'm not available. So I would like to encourage uh, profs to PORs to communicate way in advance if you're not available for class activities. I use a variety of strategies that belong to the BGU unique online learning environment to communicate with students and it's a little bit like this one. So it's up to you, would you like to take it off? Uh, you know what I would do in this case? Um, yeah. I think what's unique about BGU, at least from my experience, is the chapel. Um, yeah. And so I wouldn't say a variety of strategies, but mm -hmm. I use the chapel yeah. that is unique to the BGU online. To, to, I mean, it is communicate, but it's prayer. I mean, yeah. Um, and I think that that's an important part. It's not required yeah. in their grading, yeah. but I think it is an important part of our of their experience yes. with yeah. the other students. Mm -hmm. So, and so I would change that word "communicate" to "pray" with yeah. students. I, I think that, that would be okay. To uh, we can say to uh, to encourage uh, students' spiritual formation. Yeah, very good. Yes.
um, I'm familiar with the unique learning styles and learning needs of my students, and this is something that we are not necessarily doing very well. Um, do we do a learning styles assessment? And this is a whole area that we have not tackled yet, and that I'd like to uh, include more proactively in the way we teach. Um, are we aware of some of the learning needs of our students? Do we ask them to let us know? Um, do we um, propose an optional learning styles inventory uh, to our students so that they can assess themselves and uh, so we know how to best uh, teach and communicate with them? Um, Martin, we might want, not want to include that mm -hmm. yet. I mean, if we're not providing that kind of support for our faculty, we may not want to um, mm -hmm. have them grade themselves on that yet. I mean, it's just, it is something that I think that we need to do mm -hmm. until we've, um, you know, maybe in a couple of months, add it to it, something like that. Okay. Um, if, if we put it in, then it makes us think about it. <laughs> That's my, my, my approach. But um that's true should we put it should we put it just on the agenda for the next faculty meeting and then um and leave it out for the time being and we'll add it after we discuss it well how does everybody else feel about that yeah this is bill i i like the question i think that that's really because we've been talking about that issue you know we're talking on dissertations etc but different students learn communicate differently i like the mm -hmm. idea I think we, like we just said, that we need to include that as part of the faculty skills training <clears throat> in, our, in our practice and faculty meetings. I would, I would uh, also include the fact that we may want to, as faculty, share our learning style because yeah. that will com communicate, all of us communicate differently, whether it's yeah. you know, strict, strictly lecture or whatever. So, yeah. um, I would think that should be included as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that thought, it makes me lean towards taking this sentence out for this time and put it on the agenda for the next meeting. And uh, we could do a self learning style self-assessment and um, communicate it to our students as well. This is Jennifer. I mean, I would support doing that because to me, this leads to a secondary question, which is that if we have students with special learning needs, yeah. what are we doing to satisfy those needs? Yeah. yeah. And this is a tracks question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll take it up for the time being and we'll mark it as uh, in the to do list for the next one. Yes, sorry. Uh, Judy, you are in charge of the, <laughs> the agenda. Um, I will respond to students' requests within 24 to 48 hours. This good up. We want to have prompt interaction uh, between profs and students. That's something that has been asked from uh, professors. How does how does I don't hear you, Grace, you're muted. Can you repeat? What, how does that affect time zones across the world in terms of time? Well, that's, I mean, if you put 48 hours, <laughs> you have a pretty good chance to, to cover it all. Uh, does that question mean that we should not respond before 24 hours? No, oh, uh, I mean, we can just say uh, within 48 hours. I had, a, I had a student one time who thought that I responded too soon because they like to post things and then uh, go back and take it out and repost it. And they, <laughs> they didn't want to be, they didn't want my comment that quickly. <laughs> so that's why I asked the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, would that be better um, within 20, uh, 48 hours straight? I, I think that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that leaves it pretty mm -hmm. flexible. Number 12, I provide detailed feedback on student assignments using the rub uh, rubrics and other relevant evaluation tools. Does that work? 
Okay, hearing none. And 13, I can promote, or actually I would like to say I promote a safe learning environment for my students, respectful of their needs and their cultural environments. And that this one will probably need some explanation. I'm not sure if we could put any examples in parentheses. Um, like what? <clears throat> yeah, what is this? I was trying to think what that would mean. Yeah, what does a safe environment mean? Well, for instance, we make sure that uh, in discussions, uh, students uh, talk or uh, write respectfully to each other. Mm -hmm. um, for some questions may be sensitive in certain cultural environments and we need to recognize that uh, so that everybody understands that. Um, even the issue of how students should be called. In the American culture, everybody goes by the first name, but in some other cultures, it may not be respectful. And it would be just good to ask the question at the beginning, of course, uh, how should I call you, especially for non-American students. A few things like that. That may need to be explained. <coughs> okay. Um, what should I write? Um, because um, we can't know every all of the issues no. across no. the <laughs> But uh, the fact of promoting it, uh, we, uh, we are asking for feedback and for communication of what is uh, culturally acceptable and what are the needs that each student also has. As, <laughs> How do we respect them better? I think years ago, I, I used to, like if I had Asian students in the class, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just ask at the beginning of class, what would you be, well, how would you like to be called, or yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. what are the, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think probably the word I'm reacting to is safe, because that okay. particular word has some connotations, at least for us in America, in the workplace for harassment, uh -huh. etc. And I'm thinking yeah. something sure, yeah. more in lines of, I don't know, cultural sensitivity or mm -hmm. something along those lines might be better a way to communicate that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sexual harassment online is, is part of it, I would say, as far as safety is concerned. But, um, uh, can we put like EG? No. Uh, uh, harassment. Um, cultural sensitivity, etc. Would that help? Yeah, that would add to it. Okay. Um, and this one we already dealt with for some reason, I forgot. And uh, the last question would be just a free comments on how um, the course went, went or anything else. Is there a place where we could charge for our comments? <laughs> <laughs> Good, funny question. <laughs> um, do we, did we miss anything? Would you like to add any question? Do, do, do the students evaluate the professor? Yes, they do. Okay. Judy, from the, your registrar's perspective, uh, are we missing any accreditation perspective? Are we missing anything? Um, I think we are. Um, okay. But I'm having a hard time figuring out what it is. I mean, I, I know there's, there's something missing about um, did they, uh, uh, one of the questions that the student is asked, or mm -hmm. there are actually several questions about the outcomes, and um, mm -hmm. that the student says, I feel like I learned that the mm -hmm. desired learning outcomes actually were achieved. I, I actually mm -hmm. learned what the professor was teaching. And mm -hmm. so the professor would be saying, I felt I, you know, I communicated all of, I taught all of the desired learning outcomes, something along those lines. I can't, I'm having a hard time articulating how that would yeah. be worded. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. So, uh, um, integration of all the courses learning. Would that be okay? A desired, the time. desired learning outcomes. Uh, course desired learning outcomes. I did the course to foster students integration of all the courses desired learning outcomes. Would that be a good one? Um, no, more like I articulated mm -hmm. all of the desired learning. I felt like I taught and articulated and communicated effectively, something like that, where the professor is saying, yes, I felt like I did. So that, because what you're doing is you're comparing this to what the student is saying mm -hmm. about the professor. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, you're, you're, you want to have something that kind of aligns with what the student is, how the student is assessing mm -hmm. the professor mm -hmm. and the class. Okay. So I taught the course to foster students integration of all their courses, uh, learning outcome, desired learning outcomes. I would probably just say, uh, I felt my teaching met the, uh, the desired course learning outcomes mm -hmm. or something like that. I just make it okay. very, very simple. Like this? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Sounds good. Here we go. Simple is better. Anything else we are missing? I wonder if, I don't know if this is, would be an insult to the professor, but just mm -hmm. to say, I felt that my, how can we say it? My expertise in the subject matter was adequate or something like that. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking at the, um, the student evaluation mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And another one of the, the comments, and this is something that students complain about a lot, and that is that the syllabus and the online classroom were aligned. So mm -hmm. I made an effort to make sure that the syllabus and the online class were aligned. Clear. Um, that's usually a complaint that I mm -hmm. see a lot from students. Clear, well organized. Mm -hmm. That yeah, I'm not sure what other faculty do, but you know, at least I think for the last year or two, I've actually put down what reading I want done in connection with each week the subject we're going to teach. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I don't know if that's something we all do, but that's something I do. And mm -hmm. so I think this, you know, I feel that that the uh, how can we say that that the weekly that with the weekly expectations were clarified and mm -hmm. i don't know how to say that mm -hmm. course ex expectations are clarified on a weekly basis something like that yeah or learning expectations was that quick Yes, yeah, something like that would be fine for now. Okay. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Well, thank yeah. you so much for taking the yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say this is really good. Thank you for doing yeah. that, Martin. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time on doing that. Um I'm going to unshare my screen and I'll uh, share it with you afterwards. Um, we do have a few things to discuss, and it's already, we have been together for an hour and 30 minutes. Um, do you want to uh, continue? Do you have time to stay online for another 30 minutes, or do you want to um, table the uh, faculty advisement on programs and policies and resources? I'm actually fine to stay on. Sorry? Yeah. Are you willing to stay on? That's, is that what you said? 
Yeah, this is Bill. Okay. I'm fine. Yeah, this is Brian. I can stay on. Thank you. Um, I need to go. Okay. And I appreciate that you came in, uh, Grace, and thank you for still being part of our faculty. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I appreciate it and I want to stay that way, even though I can't, I, you know, I'm not able really to do all the online stuff now. But you, your experience and your thoughts are very valuable, so I appreciate that. Thank you. And have a wonderful rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Okay, uh, Judy, you're sharing your screen. Uh, we need to uh, look at book reviews. Uh, Judy, do you want to speak to that? You're muted. Oh, sorry about that. No yeah, problem. one of the um, suggestions from the student who shared with us about um, how to, to be more professional and all that. One of the suggestions we made was that um, rather than have six book reviews for every class, regardless of how many credits, that perhaps it would be better if, for example, for a three credit class, you had three book reviews, for a four credit class, four book reviews, for a, you know, in other words, corresponding book reports. Um, and I, I personally, I thought this was a really great idea um, when I was at Trax and found out, I don't know whether uh, you've heard me say this before, but um, that we increased our number of hours per credit. So in other words, for one credit, a student has to do 45 hours worth of work, either in the online classroom, reading, writing, whatever. Well, the... Um, standard for the United States is actually 130 or 37 hours instead of 45. Mm -hmm. And so with the number of hours that our students spend online, which is considerable, um, we're way even way over the 45 hours per credit. And so I think that dropping that down so that a three credit class has three book reviews, et cetera, uh, it's clearer to the students. They feel that it's more equitable, and um, it just seems logical to me. <laughs> so I wanted to bring it up and see if everybody agreed with that. Um, a couple of questions. Well, maybe I should let, let a faculty speak first and get your feedback, and then I can get back to you. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me ask a question. This is Bill, just so I'm clear. I think we've always had X number of pages of reading for X number of credits. And then we had book reports basically on all that reading. So we'd actually be changing, I think is what you're saying, Judy. And then we would actually say a three credit course, three credits, an eight credit course, say my organizational assessment would be eight book, book reviews. And would we then require which books they would, you know, out of their say 3,600 pages of reading, they could select what they'd want to do book reviews on or and just some of the questions that come to my mind. Yeah, uh, actually, we had changed um, our requirement. It used to be three book reviews were only required, no matter how big the class was. And so we changed it to six. Um, this was not too long ago, so it hasn't really taken effect in all the classes. Mm. And some of the classes, like the overtures, there's a book review required for every required book. Every Book that's required in the reading um, mm -hmm. required reading list so I, I think what we're what I'm proposing is that um, yes depending on the number of credits it would be a certain number of um, corresponding book reviews it would be very simple for the student to understand mm -hmm. um, and it's really up to the professor as to mm -hmm. what those books would be or if the student would have a choice and so you make the professor would make that designation that's not what we're, what we're saying. Yes, the still, still there's, for a three credit class, it's still 1200 pages you've got to read. And mm -hmm. like in my class, I require my students to reference every single book in their final project or they don't, mm -hmm. they get de deducted. So I want to mm -hmm. quote, I let them know in the explanation of what the individual project is, that if mm -hmm. they haven't referenced every single book and every single one of the transformational leadership perspectives, that they don't get a good grade. <laughs> they won't get an A, uh, but that's the topic of the class. So of course, mm -hmm. that's why 
I was requiring that. But um, as far as uh, what I'm mainly talking about here is that the 45 hours per credit is not equitable for, you know, a three credit mm -hmm. class to have six book reviews and a eight credit class only has six, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Judy, I, I support that. I, I think that uh, the, going to the six was a little hard for some of the three credit students that yes. I had. Yeah, so, yeah I, I support so too. that. Okay. Is, is there any history? Um, that was one of my questions. Why did we move from three to six all of a sudden? Um, well, we moved from requiring a book review for every single required text, mm -hmm. which was yeah. for years. It was under that law. <laughs> yes. And then um, Dale Dan wanted to move it to three. And so okay. that's why we did. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, then when we were doing our 45, you know, trying to, to figure out the number of credits, mm -hmm. we realized that it should be six because there were usually six books required in the required reading list. So we were trying mm -hmm. to move it back and bring the number up again. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, it doesn't make sense. And, and perhaps, you know, maybe even eight book reviews is too much for an eight credit class. I don't know, Bill, you would have to, to answer that. but. Mm -hmm. um, to me, the book I don't think so. Yeah. They're helpful to an, to a certain degree, but mm -hmm. for me, requiring them to um, because what you're trying to do is I should be assured that they're actually reading the books and not just the books that are you know for the book mm -hmm. reviews. So, Judy, I have but another. We, but we do, we do more than that. We want to, them to critically and and analyze and. Um, analyze that take away from the books and that's what the book review helps them to do and right. uh, integrate them in their lives and just reading the book will not do it most of the time right i have a question as long as we're on this subject i notice <clears throat> that a here has both the word reviews and reports <clears throat> is there a preferred term should we call it a review or a report yes review <laughs> um Yes, I would rather have it report because the a report would uh, point to the, the students learning and their critical analysis rather than the uh, review. But maybe, maybe it's my perception of the English word. I, I guess I would see the word just in the reverse. <clears throat> okay, me too. <laughs> yeah. Wait, okay, you guys are yeah. not well, the ESL people. So. The, the, the reason that we changed it to review was mm -hmm. that when they did a report, they were doing it like a standard book report, like they did mm -hmm. for their bachelor's or high school. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't include, include that critical analysis. And so oh, that's, okay. why we, okay. that's why we changed yeah. it. Through. And it didn't necessarily include the application, you know, mm -hmm. in, a re, in a report. That's kind of what some of our thinking right. came up okay. with those ideas. Okay, so that makes I sense. Need to, I, need, I do need to get a hold of it. I must have missed that discussion when we went from three to six. and. You know, same the organizational assessment course, I think there's probably nine books that are required in there. And, it, and right now it's set up that they do reports, reviews on all nine of those books. Uh, well, I must have missed that discussion somewhere that we'd actually <laughs> reduce that. But, but, you know, I'm fine. Um, I don't know, one credit per book review. Because over... I, I would say, okay, if we require the student to reference each book read in the in the final project, otherwise I, would not, I don't think I would agree because then we don't have enough accountability set up. Yeah, I think Bill got locked up. Yeah. I'll try to re <laughs> remember what we said and put it in here, yeah. <laughs> if I miss it, just um, let me know. Yeah. Thank you. Any other thoughts on book reviews? Okay. Um, the restructuring of the programs. Um, I want to thank those of you who have been part of the DMIN PhD um, discernment task force. And um, the direction that we seem to uh, go is that we're going to move the DIMIN into an option for DTL with the less prerequisites. So the students who have a theological or biblical background uh, could uh, apply and do this option for. 
and we would just teach out the demand. Uh, we, we are still going through a survey process. Um, we want the regions to get their input to uh, give input, and we want also alumni to give input. And I'm meeting on Thursday, I believe, with uh, Claire to set this up as well. And we'll have a board of regions meeting, hopefully the first or second week of January. So this is um, for the doctor level. And class. My meeting. Oh, sorry. Um, at the master's level, um, we are also going to start um, a discernment process as to um, try to, because of the small number of students, we try to merge some, some of our masters into one with different tracks and uh, possibly uh, keep the MBA uh, separate or not. This is not, has not been uh, yes, uh, discussed yet or discerned yet. So if I would like to ask you if you are interested in being part of this uh, discussion and discernment process regarding the master's uh, degrees, uh, please let us know and um, I will um, include you in all the emails and invitations for meetings. It, sh it shouldn't involve too many meetings, but uh, we give feedback also online. Do we have any questions for that or comments? Yeah, my internet connection dropped off, so yeah. I'm back on now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Okay. So please do volunteer if you if you feel that you would like to be involved in this discernment process regarding the master's degrees. We want, we just uh, we're in the process actually of trying to um, align the small number of students with our um, faculty and our staff capacity as well. Uh, books and resources. I would like you just if one or two or two of you have read a good book. You want to share for two minutes about it? And I want to initiate this process and encourage us to read. I'll share one. I'll share one. Okay. Reading. Uh, N.T. Wright, um, How God Became King. Mm -hmm. uh, just, it, it ties into our BGU message because we emphasize the kingdom of God. And uh, I've, I've just found this. In fact, I'm reading it the second time. Uh, it's really great. It, it adjusts a whole lot of our evangelical short-sightedness. <laughs> but uh, anyway, really recommend the book. Thank you so much. Mm. Anybody else? For this last organizational assessment course, we added the book, Writing the Waves of Culture, uh, mm -hmm. by Trumpenhauer, Trump which was quite good, I thought, in terms of, you know, they've just done a lot of research in terms of uh, what's, you know, various cultural norms, sensitivity to various cultures. They, of course, have applied that to the business mm -hmm. arena, but mm -hmm. being able to apply it to organizations mm -hmm. has been very helpful. The book was yeah. just revised in 2012 and mm -hmm. have a lot of stuff that was not in the 1990s version. Yeah, thank you. I'm reading a, a good one uh, that's called Every, Everyday Theology, uh, published in 2007, that gives an approach on how to um, analyze and evaluate uh, pop, uh, popular culture. And they give also uh, examples on how uh, cultural texts and trends um, can be analyzed with uh, case studies. So I've, I'm enjoying this one. Who's the author of that book? If I can remember, it's um, Van Hooser, Kevin Van Hooser and Charles Anderson. Hooser, okay. Yeah, that sounds like a great book. I'd like to look into that. Yeah, it's, it's a very good one. One of the issues we still yeah, continue ahead. to wrestle with in our, one of the issues we still wrestle with in the research mm -hmm. is students who are trying to put together a theology reflections chapter and yeah. they yeah. don't have the MDiv background it's yeah. becoming, it's just a real challenge. I'm working with one student right now who's in yeah. that situation. And I think I've, see, I've, I've found a book on that. I need to look into it. Remind me, uh, Bill, 
just send me an email if I didn't come back to get back to you on that. Okay. What was that, Bill? I was doing something else when you said what they're struggling with. What? Just writing that research, the uh, theological reflections chapter. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. said, you know, I'd like to look at that book that Martine just mentioned mm -hmm. to see if that might help us yeah, find communicating, it. especially the students who don't have that theology yeah. background. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jennifer, what are the new resources on the, in the BGU online library? Um, okay. Um, and just to say that I do encourage that we include that section, be ready to share your best read new resources in each faculty meeting, because I think it's great um, uh -huh. with folks bringing up some books there that they uh, mm -hmm. find useful and that I mm -hmm. can follow up on um, seeing whether we can get a copy into the mm -hmm. online library. And build that copy that um, the book Riding the Waves of Culture. I actually do have that one in the online library. So if yes. any yes. other faculty member wants to sort of have a read of it, it is available in the online library. Um, over the past few months, I've added um, sort of more than I think a hundred uh, books and articles to the online library. So there are a lot of resources there. Uh, if I can, you know, briefly share my screen. Um, Judy, can I do that? Um, I'm just going to share it briefly just to, let's see if it comes up. Can you see that one yeah. with some subjects covered? What I did was I just pulled out some of the subjects um, that for which we have material in there. I have been, as I add material, also trying to tag them with subject headings. And these are some of the subject headings that um, cover some of the new material that I've added. Um, I was going to try and, and do some snippets of some of the books that have been added, but it's so many that what I want to do is try and maybe just share another screen. Um, let me see how I need to end share. Yes, I'm going to end that and I'm going to share another screen. Let's see this one. Um, which gives you some of the titles. You can have a, an idea of some of the titles that's been added. Um, we've added a lot of uh, leadership material on all aspects of leadership. As you can see here, there's the emotionally intelligent manager, transformational leadership, um, organizational culture and leadership. So there, uh, there's a lot of material that's been added. Um, I want to say a particular thank you to Martine for providing um, material now in another language. So she has given me um, material that, that's in French so that our non-English speaking um, students our francophone and french african students can have some material that is written in their language as well so i am going through adding a lot of that french material um, to the library at the moment because of the course that dr henry is teaching i've also added quite a bit of uh, material on mentoring uh, so that is also stuff that's been added. As you can see here, this is one of our French um, documents that are dear, that's there now. Um, please, I encourage um, you to, you know, if the, as we talked about just now, if there are particular books that you, you know, you find you reading and that you find um, is very good, please just drop me an email. And I will try to see if we can find those available um, online. And once it is available, then I and and it's downloadable, then I can add it to um, to the online library. 
There's stuff also, as you see here, on servant leadership, on women in Africa, um, empowerment, um, church leadership, women in church leadership. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to log in to the online library and browse uh, some of the resources that's there. Uh, I would like, you know, that people actually go in and use it. And if you use it, I think then you're more likely to encourage your students to go in and use it, mm -hmm. uh, which brings us to the next item on uh, the, let me stop sharing this. So Judy, I uh, can put back up the... Um, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, it's Jeff, about adding a section <laughs> into the next, which is about adding a section in your class that would require the students to go and conduct search um, research in the BGU online library. And I don't know what your thoughts are on that. If you anybody is willing to share their thoughts on that one. And this is uh, just, uh, Jennifer, to add to what you said, uh, is in view of demonstrating that our students actually do use our library uh, in view of the tracks accreditation. Exactly. And uh, Jennifer has just done accreditation for the uni university, another university she's working with, so she knows what they are uh, asking for. <laughs> yes, and uh, you know, as I mentioned to Martin, one of the things that the the placed a lot of emphasis on was, you know, how much um, is the faculty um, using the library, how if, if the faculty is being trained to use um, the resources that are in the library and are they giving assignments that <clears throat> require the students to do research in the library. Mm -hmm. So it's something we do need to be conscious of. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. Any thoughts to that? Um, I think it, it, the, the, the assignments will definitely have to be determined by the, mm -hmm. by the, the, the PORs because mm -hmm. of the, you know, and be based on what their course objectives and expectations yeah. and outcomes need to be. Yeah. But I think it should be for any one of the courses, it should be possible to somehow build into one of, um, our, of your assignments a way that they have to go into the online library mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also to use the ProQuest databases. There's a wealth of material there mm -hmm. and I find that they don't all um, make the best use of it. Mm -hmm. Any comments? No, this is Bill. I'll just say amen to that. Yeah, I, I have had a, of course, had a, you know, a, a weekly assignment in the research course mm -hmm. that has them go to the library and, and uses ProQuest, you know, to do some research on their particular topic area, and then they do. Mm -hmm. Based on that, I actually for that assignment, I have them come up with three search topics that they will utilize in ProQuest, and then that weekly assignment, they show me you and know, they put down what kinds of resources they found that they thought would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And we having to do the same thing in Google Scholar, so that they are familiar with at least those two uh, search engines. Yeah, I think it's 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 important um, for them to have such assignments. To, uh, for them to develop their search skills, their research skills. Mm -hmm. Right. Because also, some, mm -hmm, yeah. The problem oh. I've had with some of them is that they get into ProQuest or some other database and they're not quite sure how to actually um, do, the, the re do the searching yeah. and the kinds of key keywords that they should try, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And this is why I encourage all faculty to ask Jennifer to make a presentation if needs be. I know there's a, a packet, an orientation packet, but then we need reminders and uh, feel free to ask Jennifer to come to your class and just make a 15 minute presentation on how to do research online. Um, and she's very willing to do that and she does it well. Um, so at this point, 
probably I'll, I'm going to go be in touch with each of the faculty that has uh, online assignments in the winter class and I'll review the assignments and uh, I'll get in touch with you with a, a recommendation or suggestion on how to use the library in one of your assignments. Would that be okay? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Close to uh, two minutes to the hour. Um, are there any personal updates that you really, uh, that you would like everybody to, uh, or sorry, that you would like to share with everybody? Anything wonderful happening in your life or challenging that we need to pray for? Sorry to rush you out here, but I think two hours is max for a meeting. Um, I really want to thank you for um, staying with us and, and this, uh, these very meaningful discussions and helping us to move forward. And if you have uh, further thoughts after receiving the minutes, uh, please continue to email us and uh, we can continue the discussions online. Maybe we'll need to have a faculty class on the uh, discussion forum online and then we can discuss things at some point. Any other last minute thoughts? Thank you, Judy, for taking all these notes. And I was wondering if um, Brian is, yeah, you're still online. Yes, Brian, would you mind closing this session with prayer? Sure. Let's pray, thank everyone. You. God, we thank you for this time together today and for uh, just everything that we work through. All these things are so important. All these details are going to make it a better experience for all these leaders that we're working with around the world. So we praise you and thank you for what you're doing through BGU and through this time. Uh, together today and we pray for all of our students all the faculty all the leaders of the university wherever they are whatever they're doing uh, that you might guide us and lead us today uh, and continue on through the rest of the day and we ask all this in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. thank you all have a wonderful rest of the day bye everyone thank bye. you thank you bye-bye bye everyone have a great day